Tomorrow, we get to see Ralph Ragnick in action in Europe, the Champions League, Manchester United against Young Boys at Old Trafford. Because we beat Villarreal away, we're top of the group. We're guaranteed top of the group because I think we've already, even though they're only three points behind us, it goes on sort of the head-to-head -head record. So we're top of the group. We've got a dead rubber game, and it's only a few days after Crystal Palace. Ralph Ragnick's first game in charge. Let's be honest, we were all massively impressed by what we saw. It wasn't as if we were doing anything groundbreaking, but we were organised. First clean sheet, Old Trafford since, since April. That's staggering stat. Horrible stat. But who's going to be in this team? I waited until the press conference from Ralph Ragnick because I expected him to confirm a few things, and he has. So what I'm going to do here, quickly before I jump into my starting 11, running through the defence, midfield, and the attack, I'm going to take a look at the team news from Ragnick himself. Look, if you do enjoy the video by the end of it, please drop a like and subscribe. But look, two players who are back in training but not fit yet. That's Edison Cavani and Rafael Varane. He confirmed that both of them were expected to return to full training next week. So that's exciting because I think Varane inside this system, wow, he's going to shine. I think Cavani inside that system as the aggressive presser in the final third, he's going to absolutely dominate. So I'm excited to see both of those. But it's two players who definitely will start tomorrow. And let's get excited, right? Donny van der Beek is starting tomorrow for Manchester United. I'll run on to my starting 11 in terms of what position because it's either going to be as one of those two holding midfielders or central midfielders now in the 4 triple 2 which I think we'll stick to, or he's going to play more as one of those number 10s. I'll show you that in a second. And Dean Henderson's going to start in goal. And let's go straight into this one now. Let's waste no time. Dean Henderson's going to start. I think he should start. I think he deserves the opportunity to prove, prove himself to Ralph Ragnick. This is who I think will start in defence for Manchester United. I think there'll be a few changes. I think we're obviously we're going to see Henderson there. I put Luke Shaw in. Now, we don't actually have confirmation as to whether Luke Shaw is fit or not. So maybe he won't be fit. Maybe it will simply be the man who, let's be honest, is absolutely banging form right now. And that's Alex Tellez. Maybe it'll be Tellez there. But if Shaw is fit, I think Shaw will be given the opportunity to start. You know what's really weird about this back five? We're looking at uh, what was basically our starting back five towards the tail end of last season. Certainly for a little while, anyway. Take Lindelof in there for, for, um, for Bayern. And it was basically our back five. Yes, last season for some time. wan and Tellez. Who, wan and Shaw, sorry who were our first choice fullbacks, have been played out of the team by Tellers and Delot. Fantastic from Tellers and Delot. And now Wan-Bissaka and Shaw have to prove themselves. Wan-Bissaka has to prove himself inside this formation. Show me that he can really go forward aggressively. That's what we need to see from Wan-Bissaka. We need to see wan there bombing it down here. We need to see wan showing he can use the overlap, showing he can do it properly. Because defensively, we know he's sound. But he needs to show it going forward. Now, I've gone for Maguire and Bai as the two centre-backs. You could have Victor Lindelof in there. Varane's not fit. I think he'll keep Maguire in there. That's just my instinct. It could be Lindelof. And there's not really an argument for either of them. Both played well against Crystal Palace. Uh, but I think Bai will get a chance here. And as I said, I'm, I'm keen to see what Luke Shaw could do if he does come back into this team. But that's my back five. Henderson there. wan and Shaw with Maguire and Bai. What do you think about that? You let me know. Before we quickly do move on to the midfield, I want to say one quick shout-out to our sponsors. Big up to OneFootball for continuing to support United People's TV. So make sure you go over and you support OneFootball. If you haven't already downloaded the app, the link is in the description. It's free to download. And over this mad festive period, you can get all the Manchester United news, match updates, team updates, match stats, match reactions, everything you need about Manchester United and all the latest transfer news ahead of what could be a busy January transfer window for United. And get it all in the one football app all you got to do is follow the link in the description as i said one football big supporters of united people's tv so go and show them some love if you haven't already downloaded the app the link is in the description but let's talk about this midfield eh big up to one football but look let's move on to the midfield eh and let's move on man the Manny matic was in the press conference and that is normally a nod to the fact that they're going to start in the game as you can see here I put Matic alongside McTominay, which might be a little bit of an indicator of where you think I might be playing Van der Beek in this game. You could play Fred there. You could play McTominay there. I think he's going to put McTominay in there just to make sure that Fred's legs are fresh because he was absolutely dominant, He wasn't he, against Crystal Palace. Properly in that box-to-box um, -box role when you got McTominay who was sort of sitting behind and allowing Fred to sort of run forward. I think it'll be the other way around in this game. I think Matic will be able to sit behind, do what Scott McTominay did against Crystal Palace, and then McTominay will be allowed to go forward. 
So don't be surprised if you see a more uh, aggressive, um, more impressive performance from McTominay against Young Boys. Not simply because of the opposition we're playing, but because of the style in which we will be playing. As I said, he was the man holding that, and that allowed Fred to go forward. Against Young Boys, I expect Matic to be the man holding and McTominay being allowed the freedom to go forward. Now, who are going to be the front four in front of those two? Because there are a lot of questions you could ask. You've got Sancho. He played fantastic. He was taken off against 60 minutes, wasn't he, against Crystal Palace? What about Greenwood? What about Ilanga? What about Lingard? What about Donny van der Beek? This is who I've gone for here. Let's go nice and full screen. I've gone for van der Beek on the left, Lingard on the right, with Greenwood and Rashford up front. Let's speak about each individual player. Of course, I was going to put van der Beek in anyway, but now that we've had confirmation he's going to be starting, it's really exciting. Where do you think Donny will play? Do you think Donny will play here? Do you think Donny maybe will play where McTominay is? Do you think he'll play where Matic is? Or do you think he'll play on the right-hand side where Lingard is? You let me know what you think. I've gone for Donny over here on the left. This is a system that should really get the most out of Donny van der Beek. It's a system with two number 10s. It's a system with freedom of movement. It's a system with a lot of pressing. It has a lot of similarities to what he was used to playing at Ajax. And I think that's why we're going to get the best out of Donny. I'm excited to see what he can do. And he's going to get the opportunity. Ragnar's coming in and giving him the chance. And he has to. He's got to make sure he rotates his team properly. And I think he will. And Donny van der Beek will surely be very, very excited about this. As I said, that system there, it's something that he is more towards his natural game. Ragnar has always been talking about so far, about playing players in their best positions. If I'm looking at van der Beek's best position, I'm probably going to put it right there. I'm either going to put it there or I'm going to put it over there. I'm going to put him as one of those two number 10s. That's definitely going to be the best position where he's got two midfielders behind him who are tasked with, you know, out of... Because van der Beek, if we're comparing... There's always so much said about van der Beek and McTominay, right? Something you've got to say about these two players is they are very different players. Out of possession, McTominay is a better footballer inside your team that you want. He's better at winning the ball back. He's better with his discipline. He's better with his movement. With the ball at his feet, Van der Beek is light years ahead of McTominay. So in possession, you probably want Van der Beek. Out of possession, McTominay does have some assets. So that's why I think they complement each other with them, complement each other well here because Matic and McTominay there, they're not defensive midfielders. They're more hold, they're box to box midfielders, but they're playing behind Van der Beek. It allows him instead of drifting more backwards here, it'll be Van der Beek concentrating on Rashford and swarming and pressing the opposition in the final third. He'll be able to make runs in behind, runs in and be near the box, man. That's where Van der Beek's going to be his best. I'm excited to see that happen. Lingard, he'll get a chance, man. Lingard, again, is a player that you think, this system, it suits Jesse Lingard and the strengths that he has in his game. And I think Jesse Lingard, I mean, I think I still think he's going to leave Manchester United, but I think we might see a good couple of months from him now before he does leave. He needs to put himself in the shop window anyway, so he won't exactly want to play badly. Jesse Lingard, again, will suit this system, and I think it will do it well. And I'll tell you what I'm actually going to do. I've realised that I've made a bit of an error with this team because I didn't want to go Greenwood and Rashford. I wanted to go for Elanga. But I do think that... Ma I, I don't know what to do here. I've been, I've, I'm now making this up on the spot because I think Elanga will start here, but I think Rashford needs the game time, and I think Greenwood needs the game time. Rashford is... He seems a bit out of form at the moment, doesn't he? I don't know. I don't know why I had to explain it, but Rashford doesn't seem completely himself. So maybe if we're looking at keeping players 100% fresh, we're probably going to be doing that. We're probably going to be doing Elanga and Greenwood from the start and maybe bringing Rashford on for the last 40, 45 minutes in the same way that we'll probably bring Jaden Sancho on for the last half an hour as well. So I've switched it up. I've taken Rashford out and I've put Elanga in. That's called changing on the fly or not checking your 11 before you've started recording. Eh, one of those two, maybe a bit of both. But this is, man, that's an exciting team, man. That's a very youthful team. A front two there who will track people down hard. You've got Donny van der Beek here who definitely will support that, will swarm up alongside Elanga. And basically, that's what, that's what he wants. He wants to create the overloads, two on ones. That's what, that's what Ragnik wants in this system. Jesse Lingard will, will again do that very, very well. I think while we've got Matic and McTominay here, oh, it doesn't really matter. Matic and McTominay on the other side. It will be Matic sort of drifting in, sitting there, and McTominay running into these spaces. This will probably be where we see most of Scott McTominay. Because remember, we don't really have that pure number 10 anymore where Bruno was usually playing, although he kind of operated as, as a supporting striker rather than number 10. McTominay will play there. 
and he'll drift into those positions, but he'll run back into position. Mate, I'm looking forward to it. I like, I really, 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 and I'm not just saying this because it's Ralph Ragnick's formation. I really, really like the four triple two. I like the shape of it. I like the freedom of it. I like the movement that you can get from all these front four positions. I like the fact that you, I like the fact that the width comes from the fullbacks because it forces your defense to play with a higher line. There's just a lot to like about this formation. And I'll be honest, there was a lot to like about that performance that we saw against Crystal Palace. So that's my starting 11 there with Henderson in goal, Wan-Bissaka and Shaw as the fullbacks. That might be Tellez. We don't know whether Shaw's fit or not. Maguire and Bailly as the two centre-backs. Again, you could put Lindelof in there and it's a bit like for like. I'm just going for Maguire and Bailly. So that's my predicted 11 anyway. McTominay and Matic. Now, it's not really a midfield two that I particularly am enamoured with. I'll be completely honest. Uh, but I think it's uh, something that Ragnick has to try. And it's a game where we're already top. So you can afford to maybe make mistakes in this game rather than Norwich. Uh, for example. And then a front four of Lingard, Van der Beek, Greenwood and Anger. But you could put Rashford in there. You could put Ahmad in there, for example. You could put anybody in there. Who would you put in yours? That's my starting 11 there. You let me know what you think about that in the comments. Make sure you drop a like on the video. But United, rang the Ragnik Reds, man, we got off to a great start against Crystal Palace. Because we won against Villarreal, we've got a game here where we can sort of take it easy. Take a little bit of a risk properly switch the team up because that's a lot of changes there inside that team and something I really want to see something I've been saying in all my live streams I want to see this Manchester United team now with so many changes there playing in a similar way to how we played against Crystal Palace because to me that shows that it's the system working not the players not the individuals it's about the system it's about the team that's what I want to see here against young boys so that's my start 11 you let me know what yours is in the comments and whether or not you agree with me make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV until next time, though, take it easy.